logs a part of the translation that I made a proposal uh, uh, are built on top of EADAS regulation. EADAS regulation is an abbreviature for electronic identification and trust services. It's European regulation that was implemented in Ukrainian law on trans services and right now also tries to become an uh, international law via Unicetral uh, Committee of United Nations organization. So uh, European Union tried to be build a digital trust all over the world based on their approach to this trust. And at, at the heart of the EADAS regulation there is um, five core services. It's uh, e-signature, e-seal, e-time spent temp, e-delivery and website authentication. So the main idea of EADAS regulation and it's critical also for e-government uh, because a part of technology part that we will uh, discuss later, there is also critical parts to regulate this uh, uh, relationship, trust relationship inside the country and with other countries, not only European Union, but even between our countries. So how we will deal with digital trust uh, within uh, bilateral relationship. And this why EADAS regulation gives a good, in my opinion, background that uh, uh, divides the data and trust. Because right now there is a lot of uh, initiatives to regulate intergovernment uh, relations based on electronic document as an object. But EADAS regulation splits the trust and data. In EADAS regulation, there is only one article uh, regarding electronic uh, documents, let's say, and they call that it any data in electronic format. And the main idea behind this regulation that um, uh, EADAS gives you two proof of integrity. So data was not uh, adjusted after it was signed and authenticity. So the data was signed by this entity or this person. And this why after trusting this data, you must uh, make some judgments uh, on this data. And this data can be a PDF document, Word document, audio file, video file, it doesn't matter what data it will be, and this why it, it transforms the understanding of, for example, uh, e-contracting, e-trade, public services, and all, all this stuff. So the main idea to build trust to the data, but not to build electronic documents part, but uh, we have this mental, we need to do this mental shift. Uh, to understand that there is two object, uh, two parts of this relationship in a digital world. So when we have data and we have trust to this data, we can uh, build different services uh, on top of it, and one of them will be covered within this webinar. So it will be invoicing uh, part where we will discuss how European Union on the union level tried to um, make machine readable invoices in public procurement, the, the basement of public procurement. And also we will talk about electronic identification that in fact under the hood use also is electronic signature to make identification of uh, the document. And today we will briefly talk about signing the contracts online. And uh, in fact, building the, uh, using this model, when you have a data and the trust to this data, it's very powerful because this data can be machine readable and human readable, both of them. And then on top of it, you can build any inter-system or system to human in, uh, connections. So the whole series of webinars uh, will be based on the electronic document lifecycle and uh, on EID webinar I will represent electronic ID uh, lifecycle but the uh, electronic ID is much simpler because there is no uh, asset or document that you will pass 
to the uh, entity that you would like to give some, uh, to provide some service, public service. You or, or you you can trust this entity for providing this asset. And in fact, electronic signature uh, is also the mean of identifying the uh, entities. It will be a human or or companies. So in the start of the electronic document process. Uh, there is a carrier of electronic signature or a seal. In fact, it's a private key carrier that protects it uh, from the uh, theft. So there will be a critical issue that no one can stall your private key, your e signature, your e seal, and only you can sign and use the signature. Then we will talk about, uh, then we, we use this secure signature creation device to create electronic documents, and this part is covered by e-signature self built-in block. Uh, and it's critical also that this block can optional use timestamps, so you can prove that this document or this uh, was created at this time, because uh, in, in, in other cases, in theory, on your computer, you can set time, a year, <laughs> any time on your computer, and this time will be used by uh, signature creation uh, software uh, to mark uh, as the time of e-document signing. And by default, this time is not trust, only timestamp trust service uh, is a trust time that we can use to prove this document was created at this timestamp. The second step is the uh, electronic document validation, and it's also covered by e-signature uh, uh, self-building block uh, that gives you ability to validate uh, e-signatures and e-seals uh, using um, uh, policy, verification policy, because there is a lot of possible use cases when some signatures can be assumed as validated or not. There is a two distinct uh, understanding of verification and validation in uh, trust services world. And the idea behind the verification, that verification is a technical part of validation process. So technically, electronic signature can be valid. But if we will add to technical validation, organizational and legal criteria of validity of signature, then this is a validation uh, procedure that includes not only technical parts that we will, uh, I will show it to, to you today. The next step is exchange of electronic documents, and uh, sometimes uh, this step uh, is not noticed <laughs> inside the trust uh, relationships because there is no way right now using standard email uh, to, to prove sending or delivery of email to counterparties. And this is why EA does regulation and it's a, it's a separate self-building block that we I also will represent you. E-delivery self-building block gives you evidence and proof of delivery and send link on the messages. In fact, there is a four uh, evidence, one evidence for creation of uh, uh, letter, let's say, the second one for the sending of the letter, third one is that letter was delivered to the mailbox, and fourth one, this letter was read by the end user. And next step, uh, the counterparty would also would like to validate your electronic document, uh, and it's the same, it's a signature self building block. Next step is e archive. Uh, because electronic signatures e seals uh, use uh, mathematics to uh, give you integrity and authenticity of the data that you send, there is also possibility to uh, break uh, these mathematics, and this is why in longer run, for the hundreds of years, for example, 
there is need for additional means uh, to uh, be able to validate digital signature. And this part is maybe not uh, critical for B2B relationship or a G2B relationship when the document, in fact, uh, can, uh, can exist for less than 10 years, but for government procedures like drafting laws or drafting Im implementation acts, uh, it's critical to have um, a long-term preservation mechanism that gives you ability later, after 20, 30, 50 years, prove the validity of the law that was drafted. Uh, and that's why it's a separate uh, set of building blocks that gives you ability to validate, uh, to prove the validity of document for unlimited period of time. And in the end, in Ukraine, and I think for most post-Soviet Union countries, it's a critical to have uh, a procedure to destroy documents or send them to the e-archive safe building blocks. Because if documents was, will be not destroyed after 10 years, you must uh, provide the long-term uh, capabilities for their signature validation. And uh, this is regulated by the uh, archiving regulation. And last one, uh, trust service that, that do not use self-building blocks is a website certificate. Uh, another critical part for, for building trust in web world is to have uh, ability to protect end users from phishing attacks. And website certificate uh, trust service give you ability to prove that this website is bind to the government authority or local authorities, and it's critical uh, for end users to know how to validate this part because current uh, mechanism uh, that gives you ability to build HTTPS connections uh, do not have legal power is in most uh, jurisdictions in European Union and in our Eastern Partnership countries. And this mechanism built a legal binding mechanism that some company, government body, can have their official site protected by the technical means and trust service that gives you website certificates. The economy of this process trust, it's a European Commission uh, infographics, uh, gives you five times economy from the European Commission standpoint when you use the electronic document uh, approach uh, uh, in uh, regards to the paper-based approach. And there is not only the convenience, but uh, you have a full and more control over the electronic documents procedures than or over the paper one, because we have missing documents, we have closed offices, we have physical time to send this data to our counterparties. And in time of pandemic, I think all of us faced these issues that uh, haven't, uh, that you must use a post meant to send some documents to our colleagues because the procedure told us that we cannot do this in digital world. And in Ukraine, for example, part uh, for the archives is also critical because our physical archives currently have a um, load for 120%. And uh, for the time of Ukrainian independence, uh, there, there were zero uh, archives were built to store the paper documents. And also the um, time. So for the electronic documents, we can use, we can negotiate them for a couple of days. For the paper documents, it can, it can take weeks to or exchange of these paper copies. Uh, but to go to the digital world, we need to build a very a solid infrastructure of trust, without which there will be no ability to use electronic documents inside countries and between the countries. And this is why uh, data circulation uh, made a unique 
a step uh, toward this international recognition of uh, electronic signatures and seals uh, and call this trusted lists because uh, to to get electronic signature and seals you must use qualified UTCP qualified trust service provider it's a trusted third party who was qualified by supervision body uh, to provide you services for e seals and e signatures. So we have third, a third party that uh, gives you services. And uh, government, according to the EADAS regulation, creates a trust list. It's a file, machine readable file, that gives you ability. Sorry. Sorry, gives you ability to exchange of trust list uh, trust service provider between countries. So in European Union, European Commission have a list of trust lists. So in each member state, there is a trust list of uh, UTCPs, qualified trust service providers that. Uh, uh, Gives a service for the e signature. And we, when you have an international uh, electronic document signed by Swedish and Chorvatia counterparties, there is a way to go from Sweden to European Commission to find the trust list for the Chorvatian trust service providers, check that this e signature was valid according to the rules validation and the same goes back when the Croatia can go to the European Commission list of trust lists to find the trust list of Sweden and check whether uh, uh, this e-signature is valid and the Swedish uh, trust service provided. The same idea to exchange trust lists is applicable to any interbilateral uh, uh, Requirements and it's critical uh, to in the validation process when we validate documents inside the countries or between the countries. So back to the building blocks, uh, when we have this rather complex regulation, uh, we need to understand that this EA does regulation and implement acts. Uh, is supported by European and international standards. So, for example, the whole trust service infrastructure and around four building blocks is covered by about 120 European and international standards. It's heavily centralized uh, sphere because each step uh, can, can, must earn trust from end users and government. There is no um, uh, place for mistake. This is why when we have a standard, technical specification and standards, uh, we can implement these standards by the sample software. And self building blocks uh, support you when you have implemented the EDAS regulation, when you draft implementing laws on secure signature creation devices, on format of e-signatures, e-seals, on qualification procedures uh, for the trust service providers, you need in the end the software that will give you ability to use these trust services providers by end users. And because this software must comply with standards and technical specification, it's a place to uh, for the open source. And the European Commission understood this uh, because you can uh, provide a sample implementation of core digital infrastructure to support a pan-European digital service infrastructure. And this idea to build this infrastructure, not on paper, by drafting a legal station, but as well, 
software that will uh, help uh, public bodies and businesses to build the services uh, was made and protected European facility program was funded by European Commission and uh, within this program the self building blocks were built. So the main, there are other ideas that it's um, uh, great for maybe using this approach within our countries or within uh, Eastern Partnership countries is to use grants to implement these building blocks. Because in Ukraine there is a lack of technical um, uh, implementation of our local cryptographic algorithm <laughs> and I will touch base the uh, issues of interoperability of Ukraine public infrastructure on the next webinar. So the idea uh, behind this sample open source uh, specification is to reach interoperability uh, within the European Union member states because you can have a good legislation, you can have a good standards, but without uh, a test bed uh, there is a gap that will prevent uh, all member states to create a compliant uh, implementation the European standards and in fact uh, working with such DM initiative organization digital market even within the European Union there is a lack of interoperability for e-signatures right now so they try to uh, fill this gap. Another uh, layer that we told already that we have technical specifications and we use a sample software that compliant with this technical specification uh, for the means of the reuse. And then we can use the sample uh, software to, uh, to implement the services. So in the end, uh, I plan to prepare the webinars for the main six uh, blocks and it will be easy to go. So the first step uh, trust and uh, guarantee integrity and authenticity of the data. The next step is e-delivery, when we have assigned that data and you need a proof of delivery uh, to the counterparty. After e-delivery, we need e-archive to store this data for long periods of time. After e-archiving, we deep dive in EID infrastructure. EID infrastructure gives you ability to provide uh, service uh, for identification of uh, citizens uh, for third, third parties. So, for example, if some government body, local municipal, would like to implement their own public service uh, solution, there is no need to implement EID in each of these software. You can delegate identification of citizens to the government service or to, to third parties, it's a government service as a rule, and reuse this rather heavy block to identify users in your applications. And there is a standard protocols and standard approach that gives you ability to delegate to identification to the one government service. And as an example of a document uh, exchange invoicing, machine readable invoicing, presented and the other critical part is e-translation because there is a lot of ideas behind uh, Estonian in residency implementation in our countries and uh, it's uh, doable by combining electronic identification uh, self building blocks with e-translation because there is a lot of languages within the EU and it's great if we will have a tool that will help us localize uh, public services in our countries to the languages uh, in European countries. Also, the translation is not locked to the European Union uh, languages. Any other languages can be added to it. And uh, for your information, there is also big data and context broker, so building blocks, uh, context broker, building block, uh, the idea behind it is a smart city. When you have a lot of um, sensors around the city and you need to uh, uh, 
gather this data and then analyze it with new data set building blocks. A part of these building blocks in, in plans of European Commission to fund uh, blockchain building block that you give you ability to distribute it, store the data, and once only print a building block, it's an idea behind this building block that can drastically minimize the amount of core government registries uh, and uh, in subsequent in other registries use identity of the person or of the company and their location for example uh, to build lightweight super registries it's a very powerful concept that the idea behind it that if government have data about you uh, once uh, in any other places, in any other public services, you will be not asked to provide this data the second time. And uh, uh, I would like from this part to go to the demonstration to, fit to the our uh, timeline. So demonstration will show you the same building. Uh, the digital signature services is called. Uh, and uh, uh, do you see, I, unfortunately, it's, uh, so uh, the e signature set built in blocks uh, uh, gives you uh, the whole life cycle of signing documents, validating documents, and working with e-signatures. So this software, it's a Java software, open source software that is, uh, can be downloaded for, from the GitHub or from the demo website and gives you ability to sign uh, any document with digital signature uh, using file or Carriers of a new private key file or signature creation. So I will start from the top. Uh, here we will select a document to sign. The next type use a container. So the main idea behind use container or not use container is to use a standard uh, for the e-signature uh, e signature and the most common approach that right now is used by Estonia, Germany, and also Ukraine is to use ASIC container. ASIC container is a zip archive that stores your document, in this case a PDF, and stores your signature as a separate file. So if you do not have a means to validate some custom uh, format of digital signature you don't need, then you can simply open the signed file, uh, view the PDF content, and then when you have check the PDF, uh, or check the signature in the PDF. Uh, the next step, we will use a level of signature. I will also talk about these levels in the second next webinars. The idea behind them is that how many data to collect to provide a long-term validity of the signature. Then we okay, use... Sorry to interrupt. There are issues with the sound. We do not hear you well. Can you please fix it before continuing? Uh -huh. Or maybe you use microphone? Okay, Hayana, you yeah. hear me better? Better? You continue, I can <laughs> Now better, but I'm not sure how this will be later when you continue. Slava? Okay, let's try. Mm -hmm. Slava? Can, can you tell something long, 10 long? seconds, for example? Okay, so colleagues, I will start from the scratch for the de describing the parameters for the digital signature services. Much better. Much better. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Gayane. Uh, so the first line is a PDF file that we will sign. In this case, it will be our today's agenda. The second line is a, a container of the signature. Uh, to be a, this container is a simple zip archive that uh, stores your file or files uh, as this. 
and stores the signature as a separate file. So when you don't have means to validate the digital signature, you can read the file of files and then validate the signature. The next line uh, is the level of the signature. Uh, it's a base signature, timestamp, long term, long term archive. And the level of the signature uh, gives you a timeline, uh, time frame for the validity of the signature. More data you will collect, uh, the longer uh, this signature will, will be valid. And uh, I will tell more details about this part on the next webinar. And the next uh, uh, line signature token API gives you ability to select uh, the source of private key to sign the document. It can be a signature, uh, secure signature creation device or file. In my case, it's a simple file. It's not a good practice. It's not production ready to store the uh, private key in the file, but for the sake of demo, I will do this. And uh, last field is, is the uh, password uh, to, this, uh, to the private key. So uh, after I signed, this software creates a signed file uh, called ST with uh, extension STS, but I told that it's as simple as a park archive and can rename it to the zip. Here we, we have the, our PDF document that we can simply open. And in folder maintains, there is a signature uh, that we can validate. And here comes our trust list uh, part. As, as I mentioned, trust list is a list of qualified trust service provider to whom we trust. And this why uh, here I have also downloaded from the GitHub uh, digital signature demonstration web application. It's a safe building block. Uh, and uh, here we have ability to validate signature. Uh, when I try to validate our zip that we were created at 11.40. Uh, we simply submit it, and here we have indication intermediate. And this indication tells us that this software cannot tell us that this signature is valid or invalid, because there is no certificate chain. So there is no trust to Ukrainian uh, signature in this software. Because if we will go to the trust list this software, we can see all EU member states on trust lists and the amount of trust services that they provide. But because this, because this is uh, open source that I can modify, I made a modification to this software to include Ukrainian trust list EA, into this software. So right now, software knows, modified software knows that there is a part of European Union member. There is also a Ukrainian trust list here. And here we have total past uh, indication of this signature. And this warning tells us that um, and the signature was not stored, so stored on the qualified signature creation device. And that the certificate was issued uh, by uh, Ministry of Justice of Ukraine and signed with Central Certification Authority. So this demo tries to show you that uh, without, um, almost without any changes to the software, you can provide right now your to your citizens and companies way to sign and validate uh, signatures. The main, only part, harder part left is to make a legislation for this software. But the stack from the EADAS regulation to the software implementation already was done in the European Commission and all this um, uh, data all the software have um, licensing that permits uh, commercial use. So there is now also intellectual property rights uh, on top of this uh, software. So, Alex, thank you. I think I can.
presentation and we can go to the discussion part. Or shall we take a break for a couple of minutes?